Well, here we are on the Monday afternoon, and uh, it's balmy weather. So balmy, in fact, Pat. I think you were saying that it's uh, scary. Yeah, Judah, I'm looking out. I'm looking out in sunshine, and I think yesterday, Judah, I'm not. Uh, I'm open to correction, but I think it was about seventeen degrees. Now, Judah, uh, come on, seventeen degrees in mid November, and mm. and uh, this far north, you know, uh, uh, or west even. And, and you said something about a, a flower called piss the beds. <laughs> piss the beds. My <laughs> wife walked in yesterday and she says, oh, look what's still growing. It shouldn't be growing at all. Dandelions. It's better known as dandelions, dandelions and plant company, oh, I think. I said, like, willow, you, you blow them. Yeah. The, the, the wee, the wee oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is well, that anyway, what's showing? It, it isn't, is it the sort of little puff ball of a uh, puff ball thing? I, I don't uh, know what the correct name for them is. But the yellow, the yellow isn't showing, is it? They've gone beyond no, no, the yellow. But, uh, no, but the ones with the puff ball, you uh, know, the one you can blow them in. The, oh, the, I always say, he loves me, he loves me not. She not loves exactly. Me, not. Well, what he, they're still growing, too. Dude, they shouldn't be growing. Yeah. And like, I look out today, it's, uh, you know, it's definitely somewhere in the region, maybe 14, 15, 16, definitely. You know what we're doing, Pat? We're inviting misery in ourselves. What do you mean? Well, we're we want saying, this we is bad. Yeah. You're too yeah. warm. Uh, where's God the dogs? Want some cold? And then you cold know something? Come. At this stage, uh, several years back, we would have had the fire on every day. Uh, I yeah. think we've had the fire on once so far this winter yeah. or this Sodom, or I don't know what term you use these days. Strange, strange. Okay, yeah. let's go to uh, matters public. Um, a name that has been in all the newspapers. In fact, you go to the RTE News website, there's at least three articles on it. Yeah. Uh, on her, uh, Vicky Phelan, woman called Vicky yeah. Phelan, who has died um, yeah. of cancer, as far as I know. Um, do you want to tell us why she died? I do. It's a, it's a really, really tragic story, but it's also, you know, I can't use the words that I would love to use. Judy, about, I think it was about um, 2017 or two, and, and so she came out and she stood at the court, the steps of the court. She had been just awarded 2.5 million uh Euro student, I'd say she, she would have handed it back there and then if they could say, you know, she's a she was diagnosed with terminal illness. But here's the, the background, Jude. She in 2011, around about 2010, 2011, she went for a cervical smear. Mm. Was told everything was grand, et cetera, et cetera. There was no abnormalities. And away she went. 2014, she was diagnosed with cervical cancer, got treatment, et cetera, et cetera. And then they did some uh, bit of um, uh, what, investigations. And it turned out that the original 2011 smear had been totally wrong. Now, Jude, the, here's the real tragedy. Had it been addressed early, there's a fair chance that she would have had a complete recovery oh. or at least you know, a certain way of being treated. But the fact that it was allowed to fester and grow and all the rest of it, it meant that I think about 2018, and she was diagnosed with stage four terminal cancer, and it was you know there was no way any recovery and mm -hmm. so on. But then she was an amazing woman, dude. She really was. She said, "I wonder how many other people are like me." And she started this campaign. And dude, here's the thing, and it is apps, dude. It's guts wrenching when you think of it. They discovered there was 221 women. You know, Jude, imagine being told your wife, your mother, your sister, or whatever, has cervical cancer, 221 of them. And that, you know, she, she stood in the steps. I wrote it down. The women of Ireland can no longer trust the cervical check program. Jude, you know, if there was prostate cancer or whatever for men or whatever, Jude, I, I think it's an absolute. And, but you know the thing that strikes me all the time, the number of occasions that uh, there's a court case where it says a young man or a, you know, a young woman who's now you know, confined to a wheelchair was as a result of something went, went wrong and so on. The number of sort of uh, uh, damages awards, there's usually one a week. You're going, is, that, is it just our health service or is this going across the world? Is it carelessness? Is it incompetence? Well, is it the system or what is yeah, it? Well, that's what I was going to say, Pat. I mean, most people who uh, work in health, who join yeah. health, I think join it for uh, even high motives. You know, they yeah. want to help people. They want to look after. Them, they want to make them better if they can. Um, was it individual error? I suppose you would have to say. Was it sloppiness in somebody's part, an individual, or was it the way the system set up that encouraged, you know, uh, decisions? Well, well I, I think what happened to the, in Ireland. Uh, they were so they had only one laboratory. Now, Jill, I'm open to correct this because it's off the top of my head. I think mm. there was only one laboratory at one stage, and it was so overwhelmed 
that they decided to subcontract it out to an American firm, as far as I recall. Really? And, oh. and what happened then was, uh, now, Jude, uh, the fact that she was awarded $2.5 million mm. uh, suggests that they admitted some sort of liability, oh, yeah. of, uh, you know, that, that they, they paid up. But, Jude, it's, you know, you know, see today, this woman, she's got two kids, I think one's about 15, I think it's, and that might be a boy, and the wee girl might be 12, or the other way around. Anyway, she's children, about five, 15 and at 10, as far as I know. Mm. She's only in her 40s, and so on, Jude, and she should have lived a lot longer. But, Jude, mm. you know, when you, when you sit and think about it, 221, you know, cases. That's a lot. That's a, 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 a horribly high figure. A, a, a horribly high, who have probably got terminal cancer because of this. Yeah. And that's what we know about you. Yeah, yeah. I, I suppose that being fed, well, I, I, I agree there's something wrong with a system where you have that number of people. But um, at the same time, you have to make room for honest mistakes. You know, there must be I, people who I, honestly do their best and they, they screw up. You know, um, yeah. maybe that the fault there lies with the people who hired them. Maybe they shouldn't have hired this person. They maybe didn't have the kind of skills that are necessary. Um, I, but Jude, but I, I remember years back, and obviously I can't mention names, that there was a certain surgeon that I was aware of. And I remember another surgeon saying, I am fed up to thy teeth, correcting his mistakes. It's time somebody did something about them. You know, Jude, if, if one person knew about another person, like I, and I, I can't stand over the, the ins and outs of that. Yeah. But Jude, apparently, uh, no one medic knows another who's doing good work, and they can tell when there's a the village idiots also working. So mm-hmm. if they know it, surely um, the system should be able to weed these people out. But the way the, the, you say the village idiot, like, the, but they must be reasonably intelligent if they got to be doctors. Yeah. Or even uh, they've got to be people who are scanning cervical smears. Yeah. Um, so what what happens? Like, how is it that they're careless? Is it that they are somehow stupid, despite the fact they get, got on to the you know the responsible job that they have? Or yeah, uh, Judy, you know you'd think hey, you know when you're reading scans for cancer that you'd be really really careful. You would. Yeah, you look would. at every shadow and everything course, and every you know. And apparently, like Judy, I don't know enough about. I am not a scientist. But I presume there are clear indicators, or reasonably clear indicators. This needs looked at, you know, and when, uh, from smears, uh, you know, and and it sounds like somebody either a was just in a rush one morning, maybe it was a Monday morning or something, and it just couldn't be, you know, ever. Well, was you, you see, Pat, if you say there's over a couple of hundred, then that suggests it's not just one person. Oh, no, I told you. That's the thing. That's when, she, that's, when, that's when she said when she stood in the, the steps of that mm-hmm. court. And mm-hmm. by the way, Jude, the, one of the con, uh, conditions was uh, that she would uh, anonymous, but she refused that. Uh, she said they weren't going to sort of silence her. She mm-hmm. spoke out. And Jude, she stood. The thing about it is being diagnosed with a terminal illness and all the other things, she, she actually went public with her. Mm-hmm. And she fought for people. She fought, and why she's so highly regarded is mm-hmm. she was she was articulate, she was erudite, she mm-hmm. was sort of and she was measured. She was not roaring and screaming at everybody. Mm-hmm. And I think her whole personality endeared her to so many people. And I think that's why she struck a chord. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's very sad, very very yeah. sad. Uh, yeah. uh, my feeling is there must be something wrong with the system because if you're going to be checking something which is a matter of life and death. It you should, should be get checked, it right. and somebody else should be checking it as well. Absolutely, Jude. You, you know, know we're getting yeah. watertight. Yeah, um, there, you know, know the old, I know the old one about these. Uh, the Sunday Times many years ago that you would never find a spelling mistake from the front page to the back page because mm. they had so many checks. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. and and by the way, there's an element of truth in that. Certainly mm-hmm. not true anymore. But you know, you'd think if a newspaper can have those checks, surely yeah. something that's a matter uh, exactly. of life and death. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. When human life is at risk. Uh, yeah. Um. Well, moving on from the uh, sad, sad case of Vicky Phelan, uh, we're having problems in the north here too. Antrim Hospital recently. Yeah, I was hearing about that yesterday. Closed. Yeah. They closed it, and you you see the pictures, and there's a sort of a a police tape across the front of it. Yeah. Where they can no, not take it anybody doesn't matter what condition they're in they can't take them and the reason is they simply can't do deal with any more um yeah. they're just they've been hit by i don't know budget constraints they say and a spiraling waiting list i guess that's people catching up from the time of COVID. the stuff was yeah. postponed but they simply couldn't do it anymore now the, the article i read suggests antrim isn't exceptional they say that the Anthony Gelman Hospital, 
the hospital in Enniskillen. Uh, mm. Both those are really under terrible pressure and are urging the, the public only to come in an absolute emergency yeah. to the emergency department. So, Dude, I, I, I don't know what, what's happening. Has COVID done something? The, the system, the north and south is the same. There, there was, um, my dear missus gets very uptight about this whole thing about healthcare, mm. you know, because of uh, various things. But there she was reading the other day, somebody, uh, some 75 year old person wasn't seen by a doctor for, uh, despite sitting in agony for three days and was sent away. That, you know, um, no, I can't remember exactly where that is. But it's and there's dude, there's an absolute dearth of GPs. The mm -hmm. the queues at all our hospitals now are off the scale. Mm -hmm. It's almost um, I don't know whether it's uh, maybe uh, what would you say uh, a growth in population and so on. No, dude, mm -hmm. just I'm going more digressing. old people. You mean more old people? Uh, uh, maybe more older people, but also like in the Republic. Dude, the, the number of Ukrainians and, and places like Donegal are now off the scale. In fact, I was reading the last day, dude, um, it's a bit of a digression, but let me throw it at you. Uh, apparently, about 600 Ukrainians landed in a wee village somewhere in Mayo the other day. There was, you know, 600. Mm -hmm. And the people had a meeting on Friday night where they said, look, wait a minute, this has nothing to do with uh, uh, immigrants. But it's a, like, it's a really small village. Dude. I can't remember the name of it. Mm -hmm. They said... We don't have the capacity in any shape or form. Mm. What about our doctors? What about our schools? Mm. 600, you know, people in a, a village, you know, where there's maybe one doctor coming maybe a couple, a couple of times a week. Yeah. You know, so, dude, all that sort of stuff, I, I, I don't know, is it the system? Dude, like, the other thing, just a quick follow-on as well. The, the, I saw a thing on Facebook, a girl from Donegal said that she had a, uh, what do you call this, coronary thing, and she had waited for three years in Ireland uh, and so on, but she had moved, moved to Germany and she put on a request for a coronary thing, took a week, she was seen by a coronary specialist and everything was dealt with within something like 10 days. Oh, now, Jude, you sort of got to ask yourself, is it overcrowding or is it the system? You know, is, is, is there something, do we need a total overhaul of the management system and the people who run our hospitals? Mm -hmm. Well, you do hear... Uh, various reasons given for it. One is, as you say, the size of the population and particularly the older population where there's more likely to be people in need of medical attention. Um, there's also um, the whole thing of social care. Um, that is to say, where does a person go when they're sufficiently well to leave a hospital, but they're not sufficiently well to go home? Yeah. Um, that's a big problem here. You know, the, 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 they call it something like step down or something like that, a kind of a yeah. home. Um, yeah. and that problem hasn't been solved. So you've got what they call bed blockers. Uh, Absolutely. People who can't go out, uh, they're fit to go out to a step down, but there is no step down to go to. So they're blocking yeah. the bed, as it were. Yeah. There was a, there was a woman in my, my circle, a lovely woman, but, uh, but, she needed certain, um, what would you say, treatment or care. And uh, she was stayed in, I think, a surgical ward for something like 10, 15 days, Jude, because they couldn't do it. Now, Jude, she didn't need that bed, but they couldn't send her anywhere. So, like, look at the look at this sort of, um, what, what do you make of that, that? The fact that that is denying somebody who maybe needs urgent care, care. Uh, uh, well, again, it's a I think it's a question of uh, investment. Uh, although you say you've said before that is you know we the South spends as much money as other places and the other places have much better outcomes. Yeah. Uh, but I still think that maybe more funding and and maybe more dedicated and and uh, uh, what we call it able people running the yeah. system like a man Donnelly is coming under some pressure at present. The Minister uh, for Health in the South. Absolutely. Um, uh, they they feel he's not doing a very good job. But uh, just one other thing, Pat. You mentioned the immigrants. Yeah. Uh, I under I can quite understand if I was in a village and my health service was overwhelmed because six hundred Ukrainians or whatever arrived, uh, yeah. I'd be mad as hell and I'd be looking at them. Yeah. But at the same time, that's not the Ukrainians' fault, and it's wrong to think that way. It's a government. If a government opens its doors, it should be able to provide for the people it's taking in. That's a lot. Yeah. Of no, I heard me and Michal Martin was on with Claire Byrne and RT this morning, and there you was know, some of the some of the criticism uh, from the media is ridiculous. 
like yeah. who could plan for a, a Russia invading Ukraine? Mm. You know, last year, mm. and we, we I can't remember how many thousand we have got, but we've got a hell of a lot more than we anticipated. I think but, someone like seven, see, seventy. Patrick, yeah, you didn't. They didn't have to. I mean, they didn't. I know it sounds hard hearted, but they didn't have to take as many as they took. You know, well, I, th I think they were under pressure to take them, Jude. Uh, well, because I, would have, I, I you resist the pressure if you know this. Like, if I was to say. I, listen, I'm really, I, I feel sorry for guys. I want, you know, 50 people that are homeless come into my house. You know, that's stupid. That's just I, but, but, stupid. I, but I, I totally accept that. But Martin was making the point this morning. He says, right, there's someone, dude, I think original estimates were there'd be 7 million uh, displaced Ukrainians. Apparently the figure's near 11 million. Hmm. And um, the, uh, Martin's point was, he says, Putin... Uh, he says he's factored in resentment across Europe about this, factored in energy, factored in food, you know, all this sort of stuff. He says it's more than just a war of military. He says it's all this sort of stuff. And he says uh, he, they're of the belief that Putin had factored in all this stuff, that there'd be resentment against mm -hmm. the, you know, mm -hmm. refugees. Yeah. And he says he wanted to sort of bring out, well, you know, the, the you, I well, you know the old suspects in Britain, the Brexiteers, yeah. every country's got them. Yeah, well, I, 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 I've been tempted to think that uh, Michal is maybe doing dodging the bullet and, and having it smashed. Well, I'm fair, I, I, yeah, exactly, because we had we had homelessness problems beforehand. Oh, but you, yes, uh, yeah, sure. You, sure. We, myself and my dear missus went down last year. It was last year, maybe around about October, and we stayed in this hotel just outside Galway. Mm. And we the first day there, we couldn't cop on what was going on. And we realised then it was not couldn't have been this year. It must have been earlier this year. Uh, Ukrainians, the whole hotel had been taken over. In fact, we got probably the worst room in the place. But was looking out over the bins at the backyard, <laughs> you know. And we're going. The last time we were here, we we're uh, the room looking over the lake. You know, yeah. It was a cheap, cheap weekend yeah, thing, yeah. cheap weekend break. But anyway, half the hotels in rural Ireland are now been taken over. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and by the way, a lot more in hotels, boarding houses. Uh, whatever, uh, a lot of guys are making a lot of money on it, uh, this at the moment. Dude. But there's a terrible danger, I think, with that because we see these immigrants, you know, taking over places and uh, putting pressure on the health system and so on. Terrible danger that we then say, get rid of the buggers, you know, put them well, out. That's, that's, that's the point I was making, Jude, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, and it's not, most of the Ukrainians are on the record as far as I'm aware of saying one, as, as soon as they can, they want to go home again. They don't want to stay here. Yeah, yeah, it's a tough situation. I, I just have a feeling Ireland was over the south of Ireland was over generous in its response. I but right, you getting back to Antrim Hotel, a uh, hotel, yeah. uh, hotel, what, hotel, hotel, I uh, uh, Freudian slip. What uh, is there any solution? Is anybody going to do anything about it? No, well, I, I don't uh, think uh, anybody uh, can. Do by the way, does have a uh, but uh, has, has the non appearance of Stormont got anything to do with it? Oh, yeah, I'm sure they well, they say that there's uh, millions locked up because uh. Stormont isn't functioning. Uh, you may be sure that it's certainly not helping the situation. Yeah. Um, but I suppose Antrim will have to just keep their doors locked until such point as they can begin to get the ship. But, but, uh, but Jude, have you ever heard before a hospital just saying, that's it, we're full? No, no, I haven't. I haven't. And I haven't said a lot with the last one either. Um, mm -hmm. I, my daughter works in England and they, she says that kind of thing's not, it's the norm. People are under yeah. terrible pressure. And you have a colleague who won't be able to appear because they were not well or whatever, and you've yeah. got to take over. You've got to do yeah. the two jobs. Yeah. Uh, and then in addition to that, then there's a handover. Uh, you know, you're working with somebody, and you can't just say, you look after him from this point. You've got to somehow work it to a certain stage, and then they can take over. So yeah. people are working hours for which they're not even paid. It's Yeah, it's, yeah. and it's, by the way, Jude, I presume the red tip, the, the note-taking and the... The, the file folding, the, you know, the, yeah. you know, you just, you just, you, if you're a doctor, you just don't sort of walk off. You have to put on, this patient needs X, Y, yeah. and Z. I've done X, Y, and Z. Yeah, but Z. you see, that's the reason for that is, I suppose doctors be fearful that they would be seen as having been negligent in some way, uh, as happened with Vicky Film. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they want to cover their own backside. Not surprisingly. Yeah. Oh. But they, as you say, that result, results in a lot of uh, red tape. It's a tough one. It's tough one. I, I, my last thought on it is this. We have no problem expressing our solidarity and putting several millions into the war effort against Putin. Not saying yeah. it wasn't needed, 
but we're really good at getting money to kill people in the end. Oh, absolutely. If we're a wee bit better at getting money to help people keep well uh, and get well. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to one of the, I think one of the smartest men in Ireland. Now, sometimes he gets in my nerves a wee bit, but I think he must be nearly the smartest man in Ireland. That's David McWilliams. He's certainly one of the brightest, yeah. Oh, he really is. He's, he's something else. And his articles are really good. I was looking at one by him. Uh, I think it was RTE, again, RTE News um, online. And he talks about this guy, Sam Bankman Fried, uh, <laughs> who was known by his initials, SBF. And he entertained, among others, Tony Blair and Bill Clinton at his uh, little place he has on the Caribbean. Uh, Guess what he was worth? Was, wasn't he worth something like, was it 30 billion or something? That's right, 32 billion, 32 uh, billion in yeah. January. And now, as far as I can establish for this article, he He's hasn't bankrupt. been. He hasn't no. been. Can uh, you imagine? What would you uh, say? I had 32 billion six months ago. Nine months geez, ago. Jenna, I, hope he, I hope he sort of uh, put some of it away and sort of converted <laughs> it. Was, wasn't this the guy, the Bitcoin guy and all the rest of it? Dude, see, I think what happened to all these guys, everything was going brilliantly for a long time, yeah. but then suddenly the real world kicked in. Uh, yeah. Suddenly inflation kicked in mm -hmm. and interest rates went up and these guys got found out. You know, uh, Suddenly there, there was a, people saying, oh, wait a minute, the value of this Bitcoin and stuff, I guess it's going down. And they started to uh, sort of run on the banks. I said, suddenly, that's it, you see. That's yeah, it, exactly yeah. like a bank. Once you start yeah. to run on it, we, you, yeah. we, we both remember uh, uh, the run on the banks, and by God, it's a scary situation. If yeah. you put your money in a bank, I mean, it's going to go down the drain. That's it. You really, uh, but you, the, the, the old traditional banks, and they they have had hundreds of years of experience. What do you do when Bitcoin when start from <laughs> Bitcoin? Yeah, no, who, who do you go to and say, "Wait a minute, I want my money out quick, and uh, I want to convert uh, back into sterling well, or whatever." It was a classic case. I thought that Bitcoin thing of something it seems to be too good to be true. It is too good to be true. true yeah. uh, and then all these, all these worthies, all these steady people, well-known celebrities, and so on, saying, "I personally am earning, you know, two thousand pounds a day <laughs> and stuff. Why don't you join me? <laughs> Why don't you join me and lose two thousand? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, McWilliams says that um, that companies. Uh, this is in general that companies are valued at extremely high levels uh, and now they're having to come to terms with the fact that there's a, such a thing as profits and costs count. So if there's layoffs, there's a focus on how much money is coming in. The tech companies in Ireland, he said, I, this interested me, he says most of the tech companies in Ireland are really advertising platforms. Yeah. I never knew that. Did you? I, you, two years is simple. I, I I know during the day I don't I don't watch that much TV. I read a wee bit and then I get bored and I go on social media for a while. Start a row with somebody. Anyway, but uh, you know you start watching something and right, right, just use Ronaldo or an interview oh. with some uh, person halfway through it. Ad starting in ten seconds. Oh, I got totally pissed off with that, you know, and so on. But uh, are nearly everything now anything that's on uh, Facebook. Any sort of video that uh, you know it's interviews or anything mm -hmm. else within mm -hmm. 10 seconds, uh, you are not 10 seconds, you're only watching it a couple of minutes. In fact, most of them are only a couple, of, but you'll easily get one ad break in them. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Uh, and, and dude, they were taking in literally millions. But now, what happens in the first thing in a recession? And in newspapers, old traditional newspapers used to know the same. First thing people stop doing is they, they look at their costs and say, Do we need to advertise today? Not right. That's the first thing. Then suddenly the companies who are employing people because things are going so good saying, oh, wait a minute, our revenue's down. We need to make a few people redundant and we need to cut back and spend. Mm -hmm. So the whole circle, you know, kicks in. So mm -hmm. you watch, as McWilliams points out now, Zuckerberg and all these boys are suddenly, the you know, inflation set, the war in Ukraine set, all the, the cost, uh, people are suddenly saying, wait a minute, we don't have the money, you know, that we used to have. So suddenly the whole circle, the, you know, mm -hmm. the golden circle of spending money has stopped. Yeah. And that's why uh, all of a sudden there's three, uh, what is uh, Zuckerberg is uh, losing someone like, uh, what's it, 15% of his staff, you know, yeah. which is someone uh, 15, 17,000 people Well, he's supposed to be losing a million, a million dollars a day. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, Elon Musk is claiming that, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, to, uh, Twitter is losing $3 million a day. Uh, uh, well, I wouldn't worry about uh, Elon Musk, but I would worry about it, all the things. It's, I suppose it's, um, 
Well, it's like anything else, you see. Besides the economics of it now, I know Mike Williams doesn't make this point, but, you know, there is a, a sense uh, where you get to a stage where people are fed up with something. Yeah. Uh, you know, Facebook, apparently, is now for oldies, like ourselves. That's me. Yeah. Ourselves. Uh, yeah. Whereas it was young people's at one stage, but young people yeah. have forsaken it. Uh, uh, they've, so, gone, they've gone to TikTok, I and Instagram, and all the rest. Weird of ones that and, I don't understand and, and, and at all. I presume there'll be some. I, and uh, Twitter's lost. Like Twitter, uh, the uh, all the celebrities, you know the right on people. They're they're moving out because Elon so, Musk has. That's aye. basically a right. And they've gone to something called Mastodon, which I aye, which I have never heard of. On oh, sorry, I'll rephrase that. Well, I hadn't heard of until aye. about last Tuesday. Oh, that's right. That's right. But it, just to finish with McWilliams, he says that there's today's signs, like for a while you wouldn't have seen a house for sale anywhere. And now he says inside a few months, for sale signs are sprouting all over the place because the agents are panicking. They were holding uh, back properties that they thought they'd really make a killing on. Yeah. And now suddenly they say, oh, geez, I might not get rid of this at all. Here, here. So I want to sell. I want to sell. I want to sell. Uh, so uh, they, they sort of panic. Uh, the market, he says, has swung from a buyer's panic, where people are saying, oh, I must get a house, I can't get a house, to yeah. the seller's panic. They're saying, yeah. oh, God, let's get shot at uh, Get out. Uh, you know, so um, all I can say is uh, I'm glad I'm not looking to buy a house or sell a house at the moment. Uh, uh, that's, you know? Uh, uh, do you know, know uh, like, um, this last while in Ireland, uh, uh, the whole housing thing has been a disaster, absolute disaster. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's a thing that's going to get... And we're not going back there, but it's this thing that Sinn Féin, uh, if they get into government, it's going to be housing. It gets them into government. Aye, 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 it is indeed. Okay, a um, couple of uh, really interesting ones here. Um, there's, there's a guy who's done a comparison in an article between um, the House of Lords and the Chinese National People's Congress. He says they both wear colours are red and they neither of them are elected by popular vote. Now that... <laughs> Leave aside the House of Lords. Well, I already know. Well, deal with the House of Lords for a moment. I think the House of Lords is a cod, an awful cod. Every unsuccessful DUP politician is yeah. zoomed up to the House of Lords. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. Um, and it's handed to them on a plate like this guy Le- Lebedev um, was made by Boris Johnson. He's a you know tycoon from Russia. Uh, he, uh, he, he was, made, he he was, was made a lord. Near the under- what? He was made a lord. Jeez. Yeah. But he, he is. Uh, um, he, I think he owns independent. The uh, the oh, other yeah, thing about him, uh, he, he, apparently, uh, the, um, the elevation to the House of Lords was opposed by the security services, which yeah. uh, bon- uh, Boris ignored. But the, uh, these Russian guys were uh, shoveling money into the coffers of the Tory yeah. party. So uh, you know, you, you, I don't know. The, uh, you, you have to sort of ask, like, where did the old rules? And safety guards, you know, where'd they all go? Yeah. Uh, besides that, Pat, I would have a problem with it. You know, th- it's an undemocratic uh, place where yeah. people are elected and who affect the making of laws in Britain, and yet the people have no say in it. Uh, yeah. Now, if you look at the Shannon in, in, in your liberated section of our island, our country, <laughs> uh, there's a, I, do, I don't know the details, but certainly there is a section or a number of TDs that can be elected by graduates of NUI and as also of Trinity has got its very own. Uh, yeah. That is, that really cheeses me off. Like I, I, I confess I've taken advantage of it on occasion, but it isn't. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wrong and it's sort of classist where you're saying ordinary people wouldn't have the sense to like, the, let's get the smart, intelligent people <laughs> who have got a degree and yeah. they'll get the right people. That's the thing. Well, what other thinking is there behind it? Absolutely, what well, spot on, dude. By the way, you said TDs. It's senators get elected like that, not TDs. Oh you no, did, sorry, you, I, you said I didn't mean TDs. that. Uh, didn't mean that. Uh, no, 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 we're, just, we're, but, we're leaving now. We're really about two minutes left. Um, the monarchy links to the House of Lords. I remember reading an article about this, and yeah. they said the reason they don't get rid of the House of Lords, the unelected House of Lords, is that if they got rid of it on the grounds that it wasn't um democratic yeah. immediately people would look across at the monarchy and say yeah, uh, exactly are you they democratic uh, <laughs> so, I, I, they'd, be, they'd be in the crosshairs uh, next too dangerous okay pat yeah. i'm going to give you one philosophical question today and i want you to I, i've asked you to sharpen your wits for this because you're only about 30 seconds are we living 
in a tolerant society in Ireland, north and south? No, Jude, I think we're living, we're starting to go back. There's a lot, Jude, I think there's more things now that you can't say that you could have said years ago. You can't laugh at the wrong things anymore. You can't refer to people's colour anymore. You can't refer to people how they look. Um, you, you, you know, there's a sort of... Uh, no, that I don't like that term wokeism, but I think wokeism is actually starting to infringe our human. Dude, I don't give a monkey's if somebody says, "Hey, my God, you're overweight." I don't care. You're going bald. I really don't give a monkey's. But uh, it, there's a lot of things now, dude, that I think that we're not allowed to say that we used to be able to say. Hmm. It seems to me that there's a danger with it too, because it means you can't criticize certain things. Yeah. I mean, there isn't discussion. I, I, maybe I'm just an old cranky guy, but it does seem to me that there you dare not express an opinion on certain things if they're not in tune with uh, enlightened thought in heavy quotation marks. Yeah. Now, that seems to me the very opposite of a tolerant society. Yeah. And it's bad news because it means people are going to let things pass. Yeah, um, Jude, there's, there's a difference between racism and sort of having a sense of humour. Yeah, you know, yeah. it has to, there, context has to come into it. Aye, aye. Oh, there, that's a very heavy thought to be leaving with, Pat. Yeah. Okay, okay time, time to go out and sniff the pee, piss the Fresh bed. air and the sun. <laughs> Bye, Jude. See you okay, later. Pat, all the Good luck. Cheers. Good luck. <laughs>